One thing that I want you to pay attention to is the directions because the directions are going to look different but essentially they mean do the same thing. Find the slope of the function at the given value. Find the derivative of the function at the given value. They mean the same thing. There's actually another thing we call it, the instantaneous rate of change. It means find a derivative, plug in x, figure out what it equals. All it is. So my first one, I have a quotient rule. And so to do the quotient, I go through that whole low d high minus high d low. F prime is the bottom times the derivative of the top low d high minus the top times the derivative of the bottom high d low over the bottom squared sometimes when I'm doing these problems I'll do a little bit of cleanup before I plug my value in especially if it's kind of easy cleanup other times, I'll just plug my value in. I'm going to do some cleanup on this one. My first derivative then is, this whole top is going to become 0, so it's negative 6x. Oops, I forgot my squared on the bottom. Over x squared minus 9 quantity squared. Now I'll evaluate. It tells me what I want to evaluate at. This is the general formula for the slope of the tangent at any value of x. We are doing this one specific to 1. So I go ahead. And evaluate. I think 3 over 32. What does that tell me? If I were to graph this function at 1, this graph must be decreasing at a fairly slow rate. How do I know that? Negative 3 over 32 is not a very big negative number. It's pretty close to 0, so it's a pretty slow rate. So the curve must be at that location, sort of flattening out a little bit. Okay? Same thing on the next one. Find the slope of the function at the given value. That means anytime I hear slope in this chapter, unless it's find the average rate of change in which I'd be doing the actual slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or change in y over change in x unless I hear average I am going to be doing derivative the derivative is the slope of the tangent that means I go ahead and I find the derivative and plug in the value this is a basic power rule no simplifying I can really do here so I just plug in my and get a value. <clears throat> I think it's 3. But if somebody would... Good. Again, all I'm doing is evaluating that. 3 times 3 squared, that's 27 minus 24. 27 minus 24 gives me 3. Again, what does this tell me? At this point in this function, the slope must be, or the graph must be rising. And it's rising again at a, a medium pace here. Not too slow. It's not a fraction. But it's not like 10, where it'd be almost straight up and down. This is sort of like a a curve in the graph that's rising um, sort of quickly. Now, 
the values that we get aren't always going to be very pretty. In fact, there are going to be occasions where we get some messy stuff that we have to kind of work through, especially when I do a problem like number three, which is a product rule, and it's going to expand out when I do that derivative to this really long thing. You can simplify it. But when you simplify it, you risk the chance of like dropping a sign or changing something and, and end up getting the wrong value in more than one spot. So I recommend expand it out, put your value in that you're trying to find your derivative at, and that's what derivative means, differentiate, find the derivative um, at the point. I'm just going to go through the process, go through the motion, get the derivative, plug 3 in, and evaluate. So here we go. f prime of x is, product rule, the first times the derivative of the second plus, product goes with plus, Quotient goes with minus. This is a product because it has two things multiplied together. Plus second d first. And now I'm going to evaluate. I am evaluating this at 3, f prime of 3. You can evaluate however you want. I'm just doing mine in pieces. And please let me know if you agree or disagree. Okay, good. Yes? Won't the first one be positive for? No, because the negative is not included in the squared, there's no parentheses around it. There is a difference between negative x squared and negative x squared. These are not always equal. This one means I'm going to square the negative with it. This one means I just add the negative after I square it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Up next, number four. Is anybody uh, heart palpitating a little bit when you see that trig stuff, or are we okay with it? Everybody good? I'm going to do the derivative. I'm going to find the derivative of the function at the value, and I'm not afraid. We're only going to get values that we, are know, we know. I'm not going to give you something that we don't know, something that we haven't been able to do. It is a trig function. It requires me to do the chain rule. My outer function is the sine. My inner function is the angle. So I have to go through what we did yesterday, kind of, talk myself through it. F prime of x. So I have to do the derivative of the outer. The outer is the fact that I'm taking the sine of something. What is the derivative of sine? Cosine, great. So it's the cosine of 3x. That means I leave the inner as is. And then I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of the inner. So that's times the derivative of 3x. What's the derivative, derivative of 3x? 3. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay? And so what I, again, sometimes I do a little cleanup. This one, I like to put the 3 in front so that I don't mess it up. 
I don't want to multiply the 3 times the 3x before I take the cosine. I know that it's whatever I get from the cosine of 3x gets multiplied by 3. And then I'm going to plug in pi. What? Pi isn't even a number. Yeah, it is. And, in fact, it's not a bad number at all. Because if I remember from my first um, term together, or our first term together, term 3, 3 pi, remember 1, pi 2, pi 3 pi is over here. So I think about being on my axis over there. On the unit circle, that's the point negative 1, 0. The cosine is the negative 1 part of it. And so this is 3 times negative 1, or negative 3. Okay? Let's compare these two slopes. What do I know about this function at 3? What's it doing? Decreasing how fast? Very fast, right? This is a big number. It's going to be, you look at this function, if we were to graph this function and look at it at 3, it is almost a straight up and down line, very fast, but ever so slightly dropping. Do you think of how parabolas kind of grow, you know, how they look? They start out slow and then they almost look like they're going straight up. That's what we're looking at here. How about this? Decreasing, but nowhere near as fast as that. So it must be dropping at kind of a steady pace, sort of, at that location. Right, let's get some equations of lines going. How do I know if I'm going to have to find an equation of a line versus just the slope? Read the directions. We want our answer to be in point-slope form. Yay, I love point-slope form. It's the easiest form. It looks like... y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. It's a very, very easy form to use. All I need is a point and a slope and score. I already have the point. The only thing I'm missing, the slope. When I talk about slope, I'm thinking derivative. So I want to find the derivative of this function <clears throat> at x equals negative 1. <coughs> so let's go through our process, f prime of x. Okay, I have so many choices. I can do the power rule, I can do the product rule, I can do the quotient rule, I can do the chain rule. Which one do I do here? Quotient. Y quotient. Because it's a uh, division problem. Yeah, because there's a, a numerator and a denominator, so quotient rule. That's my Lodi high. So here I go. Low. D high. I always put parentheses around my pieces. Don't forget that because if you forget them, it's going to change the value of the problem, especially if you're plugging it in your calculator. So watch out for that. Minus high D low over low, low. Not going to do any cleanup on this one at all. You can, I'm just not going to. I'm just going to plug the negative one in right away. So f prime of negative one means three times negative one minus three times two times negative one minus negative 1 squared times 3 all over 3 times negative 1 minus 3 squared. You obviously don't have to write all of that stuff down. Some of you might just be able to even plug it into your calculator right away. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. Remember, on the notes I'm going to show a little bit more because it's something for you to look back at. So it looks like I get, when I start evaluating this, I get negative 6 times negative 2 
minus 3 over negative 6 squared or 9 36 or 1 fourth. Or if you plugged it in, maybe you got 0.25. Again, that kind of stuff doesn't matter too much. Does anybody agree with me though? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, got a couple people that can concur. Remember again, this is my slope. If I want to use point slope form, I need a point. Check. There's my point. And a slope. Check. There's my slope. And then all I have to do is plug it in. The point is my x1, y1. It is one x value and one y value that falls on this function. And then the slope is the actual slope at that given point. And so my equation is y minus negative one-sixth plus one-fourth times x minus negative one. What's wrong? <laughs> Thank you. Equals y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. Do you see why I like this form so much? So easy. You just plug it in. You don't have to do any finding out your y-intercept, anything like that. I have a point. I find the slope. I plug it into that equation. All right, let's do our next one. <clears throat> Got my point. That's my x1, y1. I need my slope. Find the derivative. All right, I have to figure out which one I'm going to do. Do I do a product rule, a quotient rule, a power rule, a chain rule? Or which one goes on here? I heard product, but I don't have two things really being multiplied together. I don't have a denominator, so it can't be a chain. I've got more than just a couple of polynomials. Sorry, I don't have a denominator, so it can't be a quotient. So I'm stuck with chain rule here. Chain rule is the one where I have a function inside a function. One function is this polynomial. It's actually a line inside of a square root. A line inside of a square root. So to do the power or the chain rule, ugh, multiply the power in front, leave the inner as is, lower the power one, derivative of the inside. Again, I will do a little bit of cleanup on this one just because negative powers are easy to work with when I'm simplifying and things like that, hard to evaluate. What am I actually looking at in this problem? Well, I can simplify the half and the two. Those are going to cancel each other out. And then when I rewrite this f prime of x, I'll have negative 1 left on the top. That's the negative that was stuck onto that 2 that didn't cancel from the half, half of negative 2. And then this is the square root of negative 2x plus 2. Because when I move it down to the bottom, it becomes a positive 1 half power. And a positive 1 half power is just simply a square root. Again, once I see that, it makes it a little bit easier for me to understand what's going on here. So now I'll evaluate f prime of negative 1, negative 1 over the square root of negative 2 times negative 1 plus 2, or 
negative 1 over the square root of 4 or negative 1 half. That wasn't so bad. There is the slope I was looking for. Anybody have a question about my evaluating? Does that feel all right? You get what I'm doing? Plugging it in. I'm not quite done with this problem because they asked me to do the equation of the line. Again, point slope form says all I need is a point, check, a slope, check. Now I can plug it in y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. No extra moving around, no extra changing, no extra writing, no extra anything. <clears throat> Okay, so far these have come out pretty nice. Um, what I want to do is a couple problems that are going to be a little bit more difficult to simplify and just kind of go through that process. Again, some of you have great calculators and you depend on your calculators a lot um, and they're, you're getting comfortable using them. Others have kind of not so great calculators, but they do the job. So I'm going to go through the process of it. And if you can just plug everything in your calculator and get the answer, that's fine. That is definitely okay. Um, but if you can't, it's important that we know the process that we follow to get those. Usually the issues come from problems that have powers, especially in particular rational powers. That means I have fractions. When I go through and do my chain rule on this guy, because it's got a function inside of a function, I will get dy dx, bring the power down, and lower it 1, 1 third minus 1, negative 2 thirds, leave the inner alone, but multiply by the derivative of the inner. Again, I want to clean this up a little bit just so my brain can understand what's going on here. So what this looks like is, I can't simplify the 2 and the 3. The 2 will stay up on top. The 3 will go on the bottom. This is a negative 2 thirds. When I move it to the bottom, it will be a positive 2 thirds. So I'll, I'll just write it like that. This is 2x minus 4 to the positive 2 thirds. Well, that is the cube root of 2x minus 4 squared. The denominator is the root. That's a little 3 there. The cube root of 2x minus 4 squared. The numerator is the power. Now that I've got that, I can plug in my value and see how this turns out. So this is dy dx at x equals negative 2. That's my little proper notation. Plug it in negative 2. This is 2 over 3 times the cube root of 2 times negative 2 minus 4 squared. So this is 2 over 3 times the cube root of, that would be 2 times negative 2, negative 4, negative 4 minus 4, negative 8, negative 8 squared, 64. What's the cube root of 64? 4 on my perfect cubes. So this is 2 over 3 times 4, or 1 sixth.
And again, some of you might have been, been able to even start, start here even, if you have a good calculator. You could plug it in right at that point. But I want to go through the process. What does that all mean? What does that negative power do to this? How do I treat it? How do I work with that radical in the bottom? This one still didn't come out too bad. It sure was ugly to look at when we were working through it. Um, but I ended up having a perfect cube. And so uh, my next one deals with what happens if I don't have a perfect cube. What happens if, I, if everything doesn't come out all beautiful? So I'm going to start this the same way. Very similar looking problem. A couple of minor changes, but dy dx. Got a chain rule going on here. Two thirds times. Bless you. Lower the power one, derivative of the inside. Again, when I clean this up, I have four over three times the cube root of two x plus four. Again, I bring that down, I make it positive. That's two x plus four to the one third power. And what does that mean to me? That is the cube root of 2x plus 4. I am evaluating at negative 1. The cube root of 2 is icky. It is a decimal. And we like to keep things as exact as we can, as long as we can, if at all possible, all the way through. And we can do that. But I do need to treat a cube root slightly different from a square root. If this were a square root, I can just rationalize the denominator by multiplying another 2 on the top and on the bottom of square root of 2. This is a cube root. A square root means I need two identical things multiplied together in order to take them out. A cube root means I need three identical things multiplied together in order to take them out. I have one, two. I need two more twos. So I'm going to multiply by two more twos on the top and on the bottom. If I only multiplied by one, two, I would end up with the cube root of four. The cube root of four also doesn't exist. Nicely, it exists. Not nicely. So the cube root of four is not gonna work. I need an additional two. What do I end up with? Four times the cube root of four over 3 times the cube root of 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. So 4 times the cube root of 4 over 3 times 2. Do a little simplifying. Two times the cube root of four all over three. Pretty ugly answer. If you have a calculator, your calculator. I told you the calculator Oh yeah. Sometimes the calculator that's what I'm saying too. Sometimes the calculators aren't some calculators are better than others, they'll keep it exact. Some of them are not going to, and yeah. And I don't even know if you can I can't even like change it to negative one point zero five eight two. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. Did did anybody's calculator actually give them this answer? No. 
if you plug it in right from the start, sometimes they will, but sometimes they don't. They're just going to give you. So that's, again, why, um, especially if you're taking a multiple choice test, um, getting it in the right form is going to be quicker than getting the decimal and trying to convert or find. Okay? Will you see a whole lot of these? Not here. Maybe in calculus you'll see a few more of them. But they're out there. And so don't be afraid if things look kind of a little, a little ugly. But let's finish off with some equations of lines. This time I need it in slope-intercept form. Before we move on, any last-minute questions on these guys? Okay. All right, so let's do this. I run into another minor problem here, and that minor problem is, well, a couple. First of all, they want this in slope-intercept form. That means that my final answer needs to be in the y equals mx plus b form. Both ways, doesn't matter if it's slope-intercept form or point-slope form, I still need a point and a slope. So I'm going to need a point and a slope in order to get my proper form. I don't have either of those. I have an x value, and that is it. That's the x value of interest. I can use that x value to find both the point and the appropriate slope. Let's start with the point. To find the point, I want to evaluate the actual function at 1. That means, what is y when x is 1? It is the opposite of 3 times 1 plus 6 raised to the 1 half power, or the opposite of 9 raised to the 1 half power, which is the square root of 9, so negative 3. There's my point. When I plug in 1, I get out negative 3. So I have to do the work here. It's not just giving me the point. Got my point. Now I need my slope. Plugged in 1, got out negative 3. There is my x1, y1. Come on, x1, y1. And now let's do our slope. Anytime we talk about slope, we should all be thinking... Starts with a D. Derivative, thank you. I need to do the derivative. My derivative, dy dx, the derivative of y function with respect to x, is another chain rule, negative 1 half, because there's a negative in front, I don't want to lose that. Multiply the power in front. Leave the inner as is. Lower the power 1. Derivative of the inside. Again, multiply the power in front. So 1 half times that negative, negative 1 half. Didn't touch the inside. Subtracted 1 from 1 half. Ended with negative 1 half. And then the, did the derivative of the inside of that. I'm going to evaluate that at 1 as well. This will give me my slope. Negative 1 half, 3 times 1 plus 6 to the negative 1 half power. Oops, I should have cleaned that up a little bit. I didn't. I should have put that square root in the denominator. I didn't. It's not. I can do it now, though. doesn't matter when I really do it. This is negative 3 over 2 times the square root of 9. So I just, again, figured out what this is, 9, knew the negative was going to put it in the bottom, and knew that our half power is the square root. So this is, looks like negative 1 sixth, no, negative 1 half. 
because this would be square root of 9 is 3. The 3s are going to cancel out. I'm just left with the 1 over 2. Good? So negative 1 half. Okay. Now, I have to put this in slope-intercept form. That's what the directions ask for. I personally start by putting it in point-slope form, and then I just move the point-slope form around. That's not the only way to do it. And in an algebra, you learn to plug it in, x and y, and find b, and then plug b back in. You're more than welcome to do that. I just like to kind of get it all done at once. So this is y minus y1, that's the negative 3 I got in this point, equals the slope times x minus x1. This is point slope form. I want slope intercept form. So I just have to kind of move stuff around until I get it in the right, right form. That's y plus 3 equals negative one half x plus one half minus three minus three I just have to figure out what one half minus three is I think it's negative five halves and that should be my proper point so again, I started with point slope. And then I converted it to slope intercept. Find your point, find your slope, plug and manipulate. One more left to do, a trig one. Sometimes they look scarier than they are. Don't worry about it. We can do it. Same thing, same concept, same steps, same procedure. I need a point and a slope. I'm going to start by finding the point. I want to evaluate y when x is pi, and that is simply the sine of 2 pi. Right over here, sine of 2 pi, that's the point 1 comma 0. The sine at that position is 0. So the point that I'm going to be using is pi comma 0. That's my x1, y1. Got the point. Let's find the slope. So, my slope. When I think slope, I think? Beautiful. Let's do our derivative. dy dx equals chain rule because it's a trig function. My outer function is the sine. My inner function is 2x, the angle. So I have to take the derivative of the outer. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. Leave the 2x alone, but then multiply by the derivative of the 2x. A simple power rule derivative. So this is actually 2 times the cosine of 2x. And I'm going to go ahead and figure that out at x equals pi. Because that will give me my slope. And that's what the derivative is all about. This is 2 times the cosine of 2 pi. Same spot. But this time I'm looking for the cosine. So this equals 2 times 1 or 2. There's the slope. There's my point. I'm going to put these in point slope form. Here's my equation. y 
minus y equals slope times x minus x. Ooh, pi. No big deal. y equals 2x minus 2 pi. What does that mean? That this line crosses the y-axis at roughly negative 6.28. Because that's what 2 pi is. Okay? So it's not, it's not a bad thing. I mean, it's something that we can think about. It just doesn't cross at a solid point. But you know what? Neither did the previous one. That one crossed at negative 2 and a half. So... All right. Ooh, this lady talks a lot.